everybody. I'm Barb. I'm a naturalist here at Tamarack Nature Center in Ramsey County and I have a special guest with me today for part three in our Raptor Rendezvous series. If you missed the first two parts in our series, go ahead and check those out. They're still on our Facebook page. And if you have any questions about raptors or owls uh, while you're watching this video, go ahead and post your questions in the comments for us. So this guy is an animal ambassador here at Tamarack and he is a kind of owl called a Northern Saw Wet Owl. It's kind of a tricky name, but way back a long time ago, somebody thought that the saw wet call sounded like the sharpening or wetting of a saw. And this is what it sounds like. So if you hear that toot, 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 toot sound, you know you have a saw wet owl nearby. Usually when I bring him out for programs, people say two things right away. And the first thing they say is, oh, look at the little baby owl. And he is little, but he's actually not a baby. He's about three and a half years old now, and he is a full grown Sawet owl. So this is as big as he is going to get. The Sawet owl is the smallest species of owl that we have here in Minnesota, and it's one of the smallest owls in the entire world. So he is very little. The second thing that people say when they see him is, oh, he's so cute. And it's totally okay to think that he's cute, but even though he is so small, it's important to remember that he is still a mighty predator. Like all raptors, he is very well adapted to be able to hunt for his prey. And it just so happens that his favorite meal is mice. So I have some mouse treats with me today. I'll see if he would like to try one for you here. And normally in the wild, he would swallow the mouse whole. So he wouldn't have me there to cut up his food into little treat sized pieces for him. So if he lived in the wild, he would either swallow it whole or if it was too big to swallow whole, then he would hold it down and he would rip off some pieces to swallow. But he would still swallow it with the bones in it and the fur on it and all of that icky stuff. And then the parts that don't break down or get digested, he would spit out the next day um, as a pellet. And if you saw our pellet dissection video, then you got to see me dissecting a pretty large pellet from a bigger owl. But the smaller the owl, the smaller the pellet. So I have a couple of his pellets here today. And you can see they're super tiny, but they're just like a bigger pellet just on a smaller scale. So they still have all of the same things in them, the bones and the fur. And he has some really cool adaptations that allow him to be able to hunt for animals like mice. So if we start from the top down, one of the things people often notice about him is that he doesn't have any of those feathers that look like ears sticking out of the top of his head. Can you see where his ears are? I can't see where his ears are. All owl's ears are hidden on the sides of their head, underneath their feathers, behind the facial disc, which is that round flat part of their face. So all of their ears are down on the side of their head, if you look at an owl like a great horned owl that has those feathers that look like ears, 
those are actually just display feathers. So they can kind of put those up and down to communicate with other great horned owls. And he has a super, super sharp sense of hearing that allows him to sit way up in the top of a tree and he would still be able to hear the tiniest little mouse crawling around in the leaves way down on the ground. So that's why it's really important for them to have super sharp hearing. He also has really good eyesight. One of the things that owls are really well known for is those huge round eyes on the front of their face. So see if you can see his big yellow eyes. And he can see about as well at night when it's dark outside as we can see right now during the daytime. So owls have really special eyes that are big and they're actually kind of oblong shaped. They're kind of long, they're not completely round. And that lets all of the light from the moon or the stars, any light that might be outside goes deep into the eye, all the way to the back of the eye, and it doesn't bounce out and get wasted. It all gets used to help them to be able to see really well in the dark. So a lot of owls are nocturnal or more active at the nighttime, and that's because a lot of the things they like to eat like to be active in the nighttime too. So his eyes can help him hunt in the dark, and his ears can help him hunt in the dark. He also has some really cool feathers on his body and he has different kinds of feathers that do different jobs for him. So one of the things his feathers do is they help to keep him dry when it rains outside. They might go into a hole in a tree to stay dry or they might just let the water bead off of their feathers. Their feathers also help keep them warm in the winter time. We have such cold winters here in Minnesota and these guys do not fly south to Florida or Mexico like some of the other birds around here do in the winter. So he will stay around and they have really feathery toes to help keep their feet warm when it's cold outside as well. And his feathers help him to stay camouflage because part of being really small in the wild means that you need to be really good at hiding from predators or other animals that might want to eat you up. So his feathers help him blend in with the trees and the little white spots on his feathers kind of look like the dappled sun coming through the tree canopy and making those little spots of light on the forest floor. So he's really well camouflaged to stay away from predators like bigger raptors that might want to eat him up. I actually have a skull here from a medium sized owl and you can see that this owl, uh, the skull alone is just about as big as a whole sawlet owl. So a bigger owl like this one would easily be able to eat up a smaller owl like our sawlet here. So that camouflage is really important. And his feathers also play an important role in his ability to hunt because they're very special to let him fly silently. So if you were to look at an owl feather up really, really close, you would see tiny little fringes at the edges of the feathers. And those let the air pass through when they flap their wings. So it doesn't make that hard beating sound when they flap. Instead, they can flap and fly completely quietly. And that lets them swoop down on that mouse or that other prey animal and they can catch that critter before the animal even hears the owl coming. And when he's catching his prey, he uses another adaptation that I'm actually protecting myself right now. If you can see, I'm wearing a special super thick leather glove on my hand and that is to keep 
keep my hands safe from his very sharp talons or claws. So those help him to grab and hold on to his prey so it can't get away. And if it was too big for him to swallow whole, he would also use those talons to hold on to the prey so that he could rip off those smaller pieces that would be easier for him to swallow. Now you might be wondering why this Sawet Owl is living here with us at Tamarack instead of out in nature with the other owls. Well, he actually is here for a good reason. He has a permanent injury. Um, and because of that, he is no longer able to live in the wild. So he was found outside of someone's house. One day they were out in their backyard doing some gardening or some yard work and they heard a thud. And they walked around the side of their house and they found this little guy lying on the ground. He had hit their window. And a lot of you have probably had a bird hit your window at home before, maybe at your house or at grandma and grandpa's house. And most of the time, they'll be a little bit dazed, but after a couple of minutes, they'll sort of shake it off and they'll be able to fly away. Uh, but this one, he did not fly away. So the person that found him, they did exactly the right thing. They brought him to the Raptor Center, which is part of the U of M. It's in the State Hall. And they are like a doctor for raptors. They have their own clinic and they take care of owls and eagles and falcons and hawks and all of these really cool birds of prey. And they took care of him, but they found while he was recovering that he actually got some permanent nerve damage when he hit the window. And if you don't know what your nerves in your body do, um, they can help your brain talk to your muscles. So as a result of that nerve damage, he has one wing that doesn't work very well. Um, he just can't make it flap perfectly. So he can open his wings. Um, he can flap and hop up on, on top of things. If you've ever seen a chicken uh, kind of flap and fly up on a fence post, that's about as well as he can fly. So he can get around a little bit, but he cannot fly well enough to be able to hunt for himself in the wild and to stay safe from predators in the wild. So that is why he lives here at Tamarack. Uh, the Raptor Center determined that it would not be a good idea for him to go back to the wild. So he came here and became an animal ambassador for us. And now he helps us teach all of our Tamarack friends about raptors and different kinds of owls. And in turn, we give him a paycheck. We give him his mouse treats. So he doesn't have to work hard to hunt for his prey anymore. Here's a little mouse treat for you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Again, if you have any questions, we would love to see them posted in the comments. Please keep an eye on our Facebook page because we have more virtual programming coming out in the next few weeks for you. And also, please feel free to come give us a visit here at Tamarack Nature Center. All of our trails are open for you.